Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Souffle Art. I just wanted to give you a heads up on this video. The results were nothing like what I turned out. So if you're looking for an interesting paint video with a really pretty canvas when it's done, you should go ahead and skip this one. This is more of an educational video to show you some different uh, techniques and supplies I was experimenting with today. If you'd like to hear that, keep watching. Until then, I'll see you at the next video. Hello and thank you for joining us today with yet another video from Souffle Art. Let's get started. Today I'm going to be experimenting with a lot of different things to see if we can get some interesting looks today. And I'm excited to have you here with me. First, we're going to see if we can get a gradient between this blue and this red that I've thinned out and added a little white paint to. The links for my flow extender will be in the description so you can read that. We have this pastel blue, we have this pastel red, or maybe a pink you'd call it. I have my little paint spreader here. And then here's a little gold block which I'm letting dry in order to do another video that you may have seen already. Here's the game plan. First, we're going to try and get a good gradient between these two colors on this little canvas here. Then I'm going to let that dry and we're going to test how things like acetone and how things like isopropyl rubbing alcohol, which I've added to this little spray bottle, how these will affect the cell formation in our fluid acrylic paint. Let's get started. First I'm going to take some of this blue. I'm going to put just a little bit on the edge here. That's probably already a lot more than we'll need. And then instead of putting the red right next to it over here I'm gonna move it a little further down towards the center because that's where we that's where we're gonna want the gradient to start right I'm gonna do an even thinner amount introduce the gradient and then add a little thicker bit here so that we can cover the rest of the canvas now in terms of the spreader normally what you want to do when you're spreading paint is try to keep this as flat as possible and just float across the surface of the paint barely touching it. We do this so that you don't blend the layers of the paint too much and you preserve the integrity of your acrylic paints as much as possible. We don't care about that right now because we're trying to blend them as much as possible. We want a gradient so instead of floating across the top at a very very horizontal perpendicular angle, I'm gonna angle this so that I'm scraping right along the top. I'm going to be using some force and I'm really going to be trying to get the paint up into the canvas and blending against the other layer of paint. I'm going to scoot this block out of the way and let's see how this looks in practice. It could be worse. That was an interesting take. I think I'm going to wipe this off, get a little paper towel in here, clean off my spatula, spreader, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to give that another run with a little more paint and a little more pink. I also want to point out that I haven't used any silicone in this mixture. It's exclusively Floetrol and water. Yeah, we still see some cells because cells will simply appear as acrylic paint forces its way through other layers of acrylic paint. That is at the heart all you need to make cells. I'm going to throw a little blue along the sides here. Take some off the end. Get this at the halfway point. I'm going to do the same thing with pink. I'm going to introduce it a little earlier and then bring it along the sides at the back here. And try and fill up the end so we have as much pink as possible on this guy. Let's scrape the rest I got out. Let's get this going. Okay, round two. Let's see how this looks. Second time around. Again, I'm still going to try and keep an angle on this, but I think the pressure was a little too much the last time. So, 
I'm gonna be somewhere in between floating across the top and scraping directly along my canvas. Hmm. Hmm. That's all I gotta say to that is, hmm. It looks like I was expecting this to be a little easier to get a gradient, just have the colors uh, kind of blend in between each other. It looks like that's not going to be the case. If you want a good gradient, you might have to simply mix it ahead of time with a paintbrush or a different form of paint medium than this flow art. The amount of pressure and force that we normally need has created more cells than blending, although we do see a lot of purple tones coming in here on the back where the majority of the blue transferred to the pink. So instead of trying to shoot for a gradient, I'm scooping this paint off here. I'm going to layer it into the blue, just kind of dribble dribble. Make a little fun, make a little mess there. Scoop the rest of it. Get some paint on the bottom, just dab that in a bit. And now I'm going to come back one more time and just get an interesting mix of color. That's what we're going for this time around. I think that will be an interesting mix of color for sure. For good measure, I'm going to go back one more time uh, lengthwise. This time I am floating. Just floating across the surface. Letting the paint play off itself. Okay, so at the very least now, when, we've been, when we begin the next stage of this experiment, we can be assured that we're going to have a consistent color uh, in the base. Get something interesting to look at when we experiment with the rubbing alcohol and with the acetone. I'm a little distracted watching this and seeing how it plays. It's so much fun when you get to experiment with things and really try try things and fail. That's really what art is about, is pushing yourself, finding some limits, working past them or working with them. It's just about knowledge and growth, you know? And in the end, you'll come to a place where your art becomes a science and you have reached a level that you're comfortable with your knowledge of art and you'll reach a style you will have a kind of defined look to your work because this style will represent the knowledge that you've gained and how you've put it into practice with this visual element you create so every day every new experience every time you go out and you push yourself a little harder even when you fail you're defining your style you're defining your knowledge, you're defining your integrity as an artist, and I really think that's what it's about. That's what gets me going every day, and that's what pushes me to try new things. With that, I'm going to hop off of this soapbox I'm standing on right now. I'm going to clean up the workstation a bit, I'm going to let this dry, and we're going to be back in just a second for the next half of our experiment. Okay, we are back. The paint is mostly dry, and in drying, I have some more information to share with y'all. Let's take a look at the surface here. Can you see these little crackles of blue and up here there's a really sharp crack of pink. This is what is known as crazing. This is when the elasticity, when the bonding agents of the acrylic plastic itself in the paint are no longer strong enough to counteract the force of either the fluid tension, surface tension as the paint spreads out or it's not able to counteract other external factors. You see this a lot when paint is drying and hasn't been thinned properly or in my case as I set this down you will see this is what happens if you try to use one of these heat guns. I use this little guy all the time for my sculptures as a baking agent or alternative However, it is not very effective at speed drying acrylic paints. It got the paint dry enough, but it also led to a bunch of these cracks, which are known as crazing. So, some people like them. 
they might have a fun look to them. I wasn't really going for this, but we were just talking about it. Art is all about pushing yourself, trying new things, and now I know something that I won't be trying again. The heat gun also made these little wrinkly spots, which you can kind of see in the bottom. Little leathery looking, lumpy wrinkles. And that's from the surface of the paint drying out and the the liquid layer of the paint underneath not drying out sufficiently. Basically the heat cooked the surface of the acrylic plastic and left moisture underneath. That's why we get these little wrinkly bits. And with that, you see how we end up with crazing and wrinkly bits. The official term, wrinkly bits. We're ready to move on though. We're gonna try the second half of the experiment in which I have this white paint mixed with Floetrol and mixed with my 50-50 water Floetrol mix. No silicone, just the white paint and the extender. I'm gonna put some on the surface. A little thin layer here. I'm gonna spread this out. I'll just use the popsicle stick. Why not? Are you allowed to say popsicle stick? Is that like one of those copyrighted words? Is my video going to take, get taken down by Popsicle? I hope not. But I'm just covering the surface with enough of this white paint that we can get an accurate measure of what the acetone and what the rubbing alcohol will do. Get my hands a little drier. Let's start with the acetone. I'm going to pour just a little bit out onto the surface of this plastic paper here, this freezer paper. Whoa. I'm going to pour a lot of it out and get it everywhere, is what I meant to say, because that's what I did, fortunately. Keep little cleanup supplies here and there. And I always work in a well ventilated area, keep my windows open, keep the fan on. I have respirator masks if necessary. I hope you please do the same always exercise responsible painting practices. Don't put yourself in danger in case you spill acetone all over your desk. And here I have dipped the surface of this paintbrush into the acetone and I'm going to be pulling the bristles back and flicking the acetone out. There's the uh, acetone I was pulling off with the paintbrush. And this acetone has done absolutely nothing. <laughs> Let's try a little extra. I have a cap full of acetone uh, so I can keep it fresh and maybe get a little more on my toothbrush. And there are nice little globs flying onto this paint but I'm not seeing much reaction from it. I was expecting the cells to open up a little bit more as acetone is a very effective paint thinner and paint dissolver. And since we are working with paint, I figured it would dissolve some little holes into the surface, maybe create some artificial cells. Just for good measure, I'm gonna try a torch. I keep a fire extinguisher with me as well always be prepared, be safe, things like that. Acetone does have fumes, but I am doubtful this will create any fire and it is not creating any cells either. We live to paint another day. Let's try the rubbing alcohol. I have this in a spray bottle, so no toothbrush required. We'll just... What I am seeing is the force of the alcohol itself hitting the canvas has opened up a few little holes in the surface. If you can kind of see. Let me try and focus the camera, bear with me. Oh, it says it's focused. You can see a couple little holes here and there, but all in all, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> This is not something I would recommend for the same variety of paint used in acrylic pour painting. Uh, it might work better with alcohol inks, alcohol 
in alcohol ink makes more sense. That might be fun to experiment with. And the acetone itself doesn't seem to be effective at much else besides muddying the colors and literally dissolving them. You can see this has made a pretty fine mush on the edges there where the acetone hit. So I would consider this a very big learning experience. And now we know what not to do. So thank you for watching. Hope you had a good time with this. I'll see you again for the next video.